Hello, today we're looking at algebra and we're going to start with inequalities. So we're going to begin with reminding ourselves of what an inequality is. And if we take a number example, we have a 3 is less than 8. So this is a true statement. 3 is in fact less than 8. What I want to do first is change this inequality in a few different ways and see if it remains true. So can I change this around and keep the inequality true? So if I multiply both sides of my inequality e by 2, I end up with 6 is less than 16. That's also true. So multiplying by a number doesn't seem to mess up my inequality. Or at least that little experiment indicates that that might be true. If I add 4 to both sides, I end up with 10 is less than 20. This is also true, so adding and maybe subtracting isn't going to mess things up either. I can also divide by... What do we divide by? Divide by 2. And we end up with 5 is less than 10. That's also true. So it's looking good. I'm able to change both sides of my inequality, just like it was an equation and I don't run into any difficulties. Well, what happens then if I do the next step and decide I'm going to multiply again, but this time let's multiply by a negative number. I just multiply by a simplest negative number I can think of, multiply by minus 1, I end up with 5, minus 5 is less than minus 10. And here I run into a problem, because this isn't true. I've broken my inequality. Minus 5 is actually greater than minus 10. So this is not true. So what I've got is that inequalities behave exactly like equations. I can do all of the same stuff to them, except that I can't multiply, or as it happens, divide by a negative number. So I can treat inequalities just like equations, except that I can't multiply or divide both sides by a negative number. If I do that, my greater than or less than sign is going to flip around. It's going to change its direction. But this causes an issue with algebra. Because if I want to multiply or divide both sides by x, and I don't know whether x is positive or negative, I'm going to have to find a workaround for that situation. So this is where inequalities are going to come in more uh, at our higher level end of things. How are we going to cope with situations where we have inequalities and we've got x's uh, or variables in general that we need to multiply or divide by when we don't know whether x is positive or negative? And we can think through how we are going to solve that problem. But for right now, we're going to do some more basic uh, looking at how it is that inequalities get used. So if we take a simple example here, if I have a set G described by X plus 3 is less than 7, where X is an element of N, N being the natural numbers, the natural numbers. So I have a set, I'm using this opportunity to remind myself of set notation. So I have a set G, which is described by this situation. X plus 3 is less than 7, where X is a natural number. And I know that the natural numbers are the positive whole numbers starting at 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on up to infinity. So let's try and solve this and put it on a number line. So anytime I want a solution to something, I'm going to get x by itself. That's pretty much always what I want to aim for. So I can rearrange this. Uh, I don't want this 3 here. I want zero numbers on the left-hand side, so I'm going to subtract 3, and I end up with x is less than 4. And if I put that on a number line, what does it look like? I'm going to start at minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I know that x is less than 4. Now my group 
starts at 4 but does not include 4. So because of that, I put a 0 or we say a hollow dot over 4 or at 4. Now my group does include 3. X can be equal to 3, so I'm going to put a dot at 3. It can include 2, and it can include 1. But that's the end of my group. Now why? Because 0 is less than 4. Because I have this restriction given to me at the beginning of the question, where X is an element of N. And this is going to be an extremely important idea that we're going to have to contend with a lot uh, for our exams, where they give us a restriction at the beginning of the question that becomes important later on. So having this very clear in our heads that, that we have a restriction as we're working through that X must be an element of N, it must be a natural number, and therefore we uh, stop our set, we stop our group at plus one because that's the smallest natural number. So the set G then is going to contain the elements 1, 2, and 3. And it doesn't contain any fractions or any numbers in between 1, 2, and 3, because again, we're dealing with natural numbers, so we don't include any of the fractions or any numbers in between. It's just 1, 2, and 3, and nothing else. Another way of writing that would be a range of values where x is going to be greater than uh, or equal to 1, and it's going to be less than or equal to 3, where x is an element of n. So these are two equivalent ways of writing the same thing. You get full marks for either, and you really need to have a good grasp on both. Uh, another example, just to give you uh, a reminder on how uh, the sets that we can work with operate, if we had 3x, is greater than or equal to minus 12 and x is an element of z. Now z means the integers so it's going to be all of the positive and negative whole numbers and zero and we need to know this without any further context. So let's solve that. I want x by itself so I'm going to divide both sides by 3 and I know from my messing around here that I can do that. 3 is just a positive number. I can divide by it. And there is no heartache involved. So I know that x is greater than or, less, uh, greater than or equal to minus 4. And I can draw in a number line now. So I have, I'll start at minus 5, minus 4, minus 3 minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and so on. In terms of picking where your number line goes, just going above and below uh, your restriction by one or two spaces is enough. All you want to do is make it very clear to your examiner that you know where the group begins and ends. That's really all you're aiming to achieve with your number line. So let's draw this in. I have x is greater than or equal to minus 4. So x can be equal to minus 4. I don't need a hollow dot this time because x can be equal to. So our second line here means that x can be equal to minus 4 as well as being greater than it. So I have all of my dots going up this way. And I'm able to have negative numbers this time because I know that I have x as an element of z, the integers. So I have my whole numbers, all of my whole numbers and 0, uh, are included in my group, so I can have negative numbers, but I don't want to have to keep going this direction forever. My group doesn't stop this time like it did the last time, so instead of having to draw a number line forever, I'm going to put an arrow saying, this continues, like you can see, forever. And that's what my little arrow means. To link in sets, we're going to uh, do the same thing as we did here. I'm going to say now what H is equal to. So I draw my curly bracket and I have minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and it continues on. So I put dot 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 at the end and close my curly bracket because I don't want to have to keep writing that forever. Now if I ask myself a set no question, pardon, uh, so 
uh, in terms of the other way of writing that answer, we would have x would be greater than or equal to 4, x is an element of z. So that says the same thing as my set notation does. If I wanted to ask myself a connected sets question, what would g intersection h look like? What does the intersection of my two groups mean? Well, intersection means what's common to both or where things cross each other. The intersection of a line is what point do two lines share? What point, what coordinate uh, is in both sets of our two lines? Or we know that the intersection is where our Venn diagrams cross each other. What elements are shared between them? So what elements are shared between G and H? 1, 2, and 3 are shared between G and H. Or, we could put another way, X is greater than or equal to 1, less than or equal to 3, where X is an element of N, is another way of writing that answer. Those two things are equivalent, but we need to be careful that we write in that X is an element of N, because we don't have the fractions involved here. So that's a link in with our set notation. And then finally, the if other thing that we can deal with is where we have an inequality on both sides of our situation on both sides here. So we'd have x plus 3 less than 4. x is an element of or. And or in this case is going to be the real numbers. So all the numbers that we have dealt with so far. And all we do in a situation like this is take 2. We take this side of the inequality separately and then this side of the inequality separately and just do two sums totally separately. And that's it. There isn't anything more complicated to it than that. We want x by itself. And we see what answer we get. And we have x less than 1. So let's draw this situation. We have x is going to be greater than or equal to minus 1. It's going to be less than 1. So not a very big group. So as before, I'm going to start a little bit above and below where my group is. Now I have x is uh, less than, uh, sorry, is greater than uh, or equal to minus one. So minus one is in my group, and I have x is less than one. So oh, my group starts at one but does not include it. So I put a hollow dot for that situation. Now because I'm dealing with real numbers where I have all of the fractions, all of the if, um, irrational numbers every single number in between minus one and coming up to one, I can't draw dots because I'd have an infinite number of dots. I have an infinite number of real numbers in between these two points. So what I do instead is draw a solid line and I say any number in this area is going to be inside my group. And that's how I can show a situation involving a real number. So for natural numbers and integers, I'm going to draw dots because I'm dealing with one and then two and then three with nothing in between. With real numbers, I'm going to draw in a solid line because it's every single number that I can possibly conceive of in between those two points. Uh, and that is the idea of our inequalities that we need for right now. But we know that we have to be careful about this idea because we know that it's Later on, we're going to be thinking about how inequalities are going to interact more carefully with algebra.